Hi everyone, welcome back to the Spring Security Tutorial. This is the continuation of the previous video. In case if you missed the previous video, the link will be given in the description section of this video. Make sure to watch the previous video before proceeding this video. Okay, now let's come back to the today's video. In this video, we're going to discuss about configuring the authorities in Spring Security application. So first let's understand what is authorities. Let's understand this with a simple, uh, easy to understand example. Authorities is nothing but the permission. In every real world application, for example, for every user, there is a specific permission. For example, user one is having the read permission. In that case, that user is only responsible for reading the contents inside the application. Similarly, the user two is having the write permission. In that case, that user is only responsible for creating the contents inside the application. He does not have a responsible for reading the contents or updating the contents or deleting the contents. So similarly, every user is having a specific permission that is nothing but the authority. So in this video, exactly we're going to do configuring the authorities inside the Spring Security application. Let's understand how we can configure the authorities and uh, we will also understand in the next video how we can configure the role based authorities. For now, let's understand the authorities. Let's look at the development steps for configuring the authorities in, inside the Spring Security application. Now you can enroll into my premium courses on Udemy. I have three specific courses. The first one is build production ready REST API with Spring Boot, which includes the expense tracker API. The second one is full stack development with React and Spring Boot that includes the React hooks. And the third one is JSP and servlets for beginners. All the links will be given in the description section of this video. If you join these courses through my link, then you will get a 90% discount. Now back to the video. So in order to configure the authorities, we're going to create a new JPA entity, which is the authority. Okay. So it contains the properties, which is ID and the authority itself. So authorities in our case, it's nothing but the read authority, write authority, update authority or the you know, delete authority. So these are nothing but the authorities in our case. We're going to add the annotations, entity, table, data, all argument constructor and no argument constructor. By the time you already know all these annotations. So I don't go over in detail about explaining these annotations. The goal, the idea here is to create a new JPA entity authority, which contains the properties ID and authority. The second step is to, we need to create a relationship between the user and the authority entity. So inside the user entity, we are going to create a field, which is authority. And we're going to add the one to one mapping in real world application. Every user is having a multiple authorities. Okay. But for now, just to keep it simplicity, let's assume that every user is having a single authority. Okay. So for that, we are going to add the one to one mapping in order to do achieve that we're going to make the one to one mapping. So we will create a field private authority and we will add the one to one mapping and we will add the join column annotation and we will provide the column name, which is authority underscore ID. So this is a foreign key to the authority entity or the authority table. Whenever we are saving the user, we will also save the authority of that user. The next step is to, we need to update the user model as well. Inside the user model, we are going to create the authority because we have to map this user model authority, uh, user model data to the user entity. So for that, we will also create a property inside this user model, which is the authority. So the next step is to, we're going to create a few rest endpoints. We will create the rest endpoint for dashboard slash dashboard and we will also create a rest endpoint for slash profile and the next step is to we need to update the configuration file so inside the security configuration file we are going to provide the uh, we are going to customize the http request so inside the configure method we are going to customize the, the http request we are going to permit all for the slash register and slash login so this slash register and slash login API are public endpoints. Anyone can access these endpoints. Whereas the slash dashboard endpoint is only accessible for the user, which is having the authority of read authority. Similarly, the slash profile endpoint is 
accessible for the user which is having the authority right authority so these are the uh, customizations that we're going to do and uh, the next step is to we need to pass the authorities to the authentication provider so inside the custom authentication provider earlier we were passing the empty array we are passing the uh, array list which is having the empty authorities but now we have configured the authorities we are going to get the authorities from the user object and we're going to pass it to the authorities object so inside this we are going to create a list which is having the granted authority and we are going to uh, add the authorities we will create the simple granted authority and from the user object we will get the authority and we will add it to the authorities list and that authorities we are going to pass it to the username password authentication token which is pretty straightforward okay so nothing uh, much fancy here we have just create a relationship between the user and the authority and every user is having a single authority and we have customized the HTTP request inside the configuration file and also we are getting the authorities and we are passing it to the username password authentication token that's it now let's jump to the STS IDE and let's write a code for this okay I'm inside the IntelliJ IDEA let's go ahead and create the JPA entity for authority so that is our first step so inside the source main java inside the entity class inside the entity package i'm going to create a new java class i'm going to call this authority so i'm going to create a fields we're going to create two fields private long id private string authority which is the name of the authority and i will add the annotation data and all argument constructor no argument constructor and entity and table we will provide the table name which is tbl underscore authorities and for the id we will add the id annotation and generated value we will specify the strategy which is generation type dot identity so let's save this so now we have created the JPA entity which is authorities and next we need to set up the mapping between the user and the authority we're going to set up the one-to-one -one mapping so let's open the user entity and inside this let's create a field private authority We're going to add the annotation one-to-one -one mapping let me create some white space and we're going to add the join column annotation join column the column name we're going to provide the column name which is authority underscore id let's save this so now we have set up the relationship between user and the authority which is one-to-one -one and if you go to the database and let, let me refresh this and you can see we have created the new authorities table and the users table if you open the users table inside the users table we have the authority id which is the foreign column foreign key column to the authorities table and inside the authorities table we have the two properties which is id and the authority itself let's go back to the IntelliJ idea the next step is to we need to update the user model as well let's open the user model inside this private authority we're going to we need to provide the authority as well authority let's call this authority so let's save this so now we have updated the user model as well the next step is to we need to create a few rest endpoints let's open the home controller and we have already created the dashboard so let's copy this and paste it let's provide the uri which is profile slash profile the method name which is also profile let's change this to profile so let's save this so now we have created a one more rest endpoints slash profile the slash dashboard which is already present the next step is to we need to customize the http request we have to customize we need to add the authorities we have to configure the authorities that we will do inside the configuration file so if you open the my security config and inside this 
we are configuring the slash register and slash login API. We are permitting these REST endpoints for all the users. But rest of all the REST endpoints, we are authenticated. But instead of authenticated, we are going to provide ant matches slash dashboard dashboard dot has authority this dashboard endpoint is accessible only for the user which is having the authority of read similarly let me copy this and paste it the profile the profile endpoint or the profile api which is accessible for the user which is having the authority write authority so write authority so i can quickly format this let's save this so now we have configured the authorities the read authority the user which is having the read authority is accessible for the slash dashboard api similarly the user which is having the write authority is accessible for the profile so the last step is to we need to pass the authorities to the authentication provider so let's open the custom authentication provider custom authentication provider inside this first we're going to create the list so list which is of type granted authority granted authority let's call this authorities new array list And to this authorities, we are going to add the simple granted authority because simple granted authority is the implementation for the granted authority. Simple granted authority. To this, we will pass the authority. We will get the authority from the user object. So let's get the user dot get authority. This is an object get authority. On this, we will call the get authority again. So this will give us the authority, and we are going to add this authorities to the user password authentication token instead of passing the empty array list we're going to pass the authorities super so let's save this so now we have configured the authorities the next step is to test our api so let me go to the run our application is restarted let's go to the postman and before that we need to insert few records to the authorities let's go to the database and inside this authorities let's add the records one which is read authority and two which is write authority and three which is update authority you can also add as many authorities you want you want to support it in your application you can add all those authorities so let me click on this apply click apply and close so now we have our three authorities in our inside our database. Next, let's go to the postman and let's go to the post. Let's click on this post and let's create a new user slash register. Go to the body, choose raw, select JSON. We need to provide the email address. Let's say bushan at example.com. password one two three four five and we also need to provide the authority 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 which is an object and we will provide the id so id one and the authority name which is read so the moment we have click on this send a new user has been created if you go to the database and if you click on this users as you can see the user has been stored into the database but we supposed to store the user authority id as well but for some reason it is not storing that is because if you go to the intellij idea and if you go to the home controller inside this register we are not setting the authority so let's actually set the authority as well new user dot set authority and we need to set the authority let's get the authority from the user model user model dot get authority 
okay so now let's save this and our application will restart okay our application is restarted let's go to the database and let me remove this let's insert a fresh record let's go back to the postman now the moment we click on this send we should get the record let's go back to the database and click on this execute command you can see now the user has been stored to the database along with the authority id similarly let's insert one more record which is bharat one two three four five which is having the right authority the id which is two and the moment we click on this send we get the response back you can see now we have a one more record bharat and uh, the authority id which is two and bharat is having the write permission whereas bhushan is having the read permission okay so now let's go back to the application now let's log into the application localhost colon 800 slash login change this to post body raw select json email bushan at gmail.com password 12345 the moment we click on this send we will get the unauthorized this is not a gmail.com this is actually example.com click on the send you can see the user has been logged in bushan has been logged in but if you look at this bushan is having the read authority and if the user if the bushan is tried to let me go to the my security okay so Bushan is having the read authority and if he is only able to access the slash dashboard but he cannot able to access the slash profile API let's go to the postman localhost colon 800 slash dashboard and click on this send you can see we will we will get the contents you are seeing the dashboard contents if I try to access the profile we will get the forbidden because Bhushan is having the authority read authority and he can only able to access the dashboard API but he cannot able to access the profile API this is what the authority is similarly now if the user is logged in as a Bharat Bharat at example.com now Bharat has been logged in Bharat can able to access the profile click on this send you can see Bharat can able to access this but Bharat cannot able to access the dashboard api click on this send you can see for bit done super so this is how you can configure the authorities inside your application it is you just need to set up the relationship between user and the authorities and then you can restrict it inside the configuration file the spring security configuration file using the ant matchers yeah, that's all about this video thank you so much for watching and in the next video we will discuss about configuring the rules i will see you in the next video